Kyle, Andy here, and welcome along to this recap of my recent trip to Market Harbour for the Vorsprung International Show on Sunday the 16th of July. What better way to get there than to convoy up with fellow TT owners so we met at various points along the way until we were almost 30 strong for the drive-in. The show is one of the largest collections of Audis in the UK and in its first year, rivalling Simply Audi that was held back in April and the Mark 1s were spread out across the various stands. I was only able to attend for the first few hours but I was able to speak with many of you about your cars during the day. Apologies if I did not get to speak to you all but will endeavour to see you at some point in the future. So a massive thank you to the many that did come over and introduce yourselves as it is always great to meet fellow car enthusiasts and hear of some of your great ownership stories. Talking of cars and ownership stories, I did hear a couple that I would like to share with you in this video along with some great footage of the cars I saw on the day. So sit back and enjoy the views. Hi all and welcome to the Vosprong Show. Let's start off on the stand I was parked on which was the Mark 1 community stand. Many of the cars here I recognised including Alex's Porsche Blue Roadster, Kyle Stocks' V6 and Car Crush's 225 who we had convoyed up with and gave me this lovely bit of synchronised footage on the M1. A car attracting a lot of attention was Jermaine's car which is running serious brake horsepower increases, Glenn's V6, my standard V6, Steve Chesham's Emily Yellow Roadster, Steve Craddock's Mizano Red, and this one of five remaining in the UK ABT factory cars that has been repainted in Renault Liquid Yellow. It is truly stunning in person and many on the stand agreed it was one of the finest cars on show on the day. Get off my end. Sorry mate. <laughs> there was a real mixture of TTs on the stand, QSs, Matthew Hand's Mark 1 with a Mark 2 power plant which always takes people by surprise when they look under the bonnet. Matt's car journey is a story for another day and it was great to see Mark back at a show with his £10 bet winning car with some future upgrades just waiting in the wings. This car I have seen at shows before and the inlet manifold shine and other components is something to behold. See this one, this has got a labour of love, this one. He's polished it all by hand. All this has been, he's polished all that out by hand. Is he? Wow. Yeah. It was surprising also to see the volume of Morrow blue cars on display as they are not usually this abundant. While the 225 seemed to be the car of choice for modding, there were quite a few nice V6s with different wheels and dress-up kits under the bonnet on display. Lewis was here as always, parked right next door was Dom with his noggy from the channel with the white comp wheels, along with Alex with his particularly fine looking noggy. Nice one there. Oh yes. <laughs> it was good to see Wayne in attendance with his diamond cut Rona wheels. In fact, all the cars new to me and previously seen cars made me want to stay around and find more out about the cars and their owners. Ben's V6 Roadster is always in fine form and moving up the line it seemed to be the wheel of choice on cars was the Quattro Sport. I've not seen this two-tone car before and I never got a chance to speak to the owners but what a great job. James was here with his rear spoiler delete car and he told me all about his elusive pursuit of chasing the paint line. It was really nice to see Sean Clegg and Tom and their Bam Bam on display even if it did have those ghastly wheels on for the day. Rounding out the lineup was this desert green car next to Alex's blue roadster. So let's set off around the other stands and see what examples we can see. I don't think I've seen so many Emily Yellow cars at one show before and this was a particularly nice 225 which would make a nice pair along with Jeff Bedford's V6 that was also on display down by the TT Addict stand. While walking down the Addict's line I chanced across this blue coupe and none of us could work out the colour. It was definitely not Morrow or Mauritius, so I would be interested to hear in the comments if you know what colour this is and if it was a factory colour. This Roadster in black had some great mods and I particularly liked the vents on the bonnet. Under the hood on some of the cars were some very pretty colour schemes and visual engine mods that were a reason to open any bonnet, but this was not restricted to engine bays. 
finally getting to see Paul Skelton's car in the flesh was an amazing sight and the retrimmed interior was something else. What a cracking car this really is. Great work Paul. While walking around I was approached by a channel viewer called Chris who mentioned his Kingfisher Blue V6 and the story behind it. One owner from you and Chris approached Audi directly and asked if they would make the V6 in manual. They said no so he opted for a Kingfisher Blue 225 instead. Roll the clock forward 9 months and they released the V6 in manual anyway. So Chris took it back and traded it in for the car he now owns. It only has 15,000 miles on it and it is truly in mind blowing condition. You'd think from seeing it that it is just rolled out of the factory. The interior even has that new car smell. I have honestly never seen a TT in such pristine condition and it truly is a joy to see. You should be very proud Chris and thanks for taking the time to share your car with me. Creating quite a stir was this TT but not a TT, one of one project car that had come along from Audi tradition as part of their heritage collection. I say not a TT as it's mainly a lot of RS4 and B5 parts, running gear, brakes, suspension etc with the TT body cut and bent to fit. Nick from the TT owners club was kind enough to give me a rundown of the car and the modifications that had taken place to make it into a TT. Just look at the scuttle panel and top mount locations to give you an idea of how different this really is. It was this car's first time in the UK and it was a privilege to see this one of a kind creation at the show that has also been raced around the Nürburgring. Robin Scrivener had come along with his East Anglian TT crew and they had a small stand but a nice selection of TTs representing. On the TT Owners Club stand there were some more fine examples including this car which I believe is burgundy but I may be wrong. The day was a real mix of modified and unmodified, V6, Turbo, Roadster, Coupe, Quattro Sports, you name it, it was all here. And all of the cars had a story to tell and I just wished I'd had more time to document and study them all. One thing about the TT Mark 1 community the world over is I find there is no snobbery. Everyone is out to help each other, admire each other's cars and act as custodians for these future classics that are becoming more and more rare. Sorry again if I never got to speak to you or capture your car. Please do come and say hi next time and tell me all about your TT project. Here are some shots taken by the wonderful lens of Ben Griffiths who has kindly let me use his images in this video. You can check Ben out on Instagram at benofthenorth underscore TT. I hope you've enjoyed the rolling footage of the cars and the walk around of the show and if you have then please do give this video a thumbs up and also think about subscribing to my channel for more Mark 1 Audi TT content. It costs nothing to subscribe as someone did ask me this at the show and it really does help the channel out getting my content to people with similar interests. Please do leave me a comment below with any feedback you may have and as always thanks for watching and see you soon. Take care.